Welcome back, jerks. This is I Have No Idea What I'm Doing, and today we're going to be doing some cosmetic work, uh, working on trying to get the paint looking really pretty on this, uh, on this Miata of mine. So let's get started. Like a dummy, I decided to do this last night and not film any of it because it would have been pretty dramatic to see what I was doing last night. This is, uh, this is what the headlight, both headlight covers look like before and what some of the panels look like now. And then this is what I did last night after the uh, procedure I'm going to be doing. Look how, that's almost, it's pretty amazing how that, how you can see like actual details in the reflection over here. <laughs> Nothing, barely anything. Anyway, you can see it's just, it's just, it's just dead paint. It's, it's all oxidized. It's just like 20, 25, 26 years of, of neglect, pretty much, is what that is. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I prep it and then uh, what materials I'm going to be using to try and pull that color back out of there. So stick with me. So the first thing you need to do is obviously clean the surfaces that we're going to be working here today. Now, normally you would take it outside, you would wash it you would uh, use a good foam and a, and a um, scrubby mat and stuff like that, but um, I don't do things that way, I do things a dumb way, so I'm gonna just use some simple green and some uh, paper towels and just kind of wipe down all the stuff because to be completely honest, uh, with this level of oxidation and stuff like that, I don't think washing it would even do anything. So I'm just gonna see what I can do about getting most of the crap, just most of the crap off of this. See, it's not even all that dirty. Uh, but you don't want to start polishing a, a car that has any kind of dirt on its surface. All right. And the next step is pretty, pretty important. And it's one that maybe you wouldn't think of. And that is masking off the, uh, the rubber parts here. And the important part with that is we're going to be using a, uh, a, a compound, a rubbing compound, a polishing compound. Uh, they don't really call it rubbing compound so much anymore. But anyway, if you get the rubbing compound up into this plastic uh, with your um, orbital, sand, uh, or, orbital polisher, um, it's going to pull uh, the, the black rubber actually off of the rubber piece and it's, you're going to get swirls of black rubber actually getting put into your paint. So that's what you absolutely don't want because we're looking to bring that paint back, not put shit into the paint. All right, so let's start taping that off. So I'm just using a regular painter's tape and I'm likely gonna run out of this. So I'm gonna probably have to switch to um, regular masking tape. But I think painting, painter's tape is probably the best to use for parts like this. And I'm done. So now we're going to take this is uh, this is called uh, Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. Now this is not the most aggressive rubbing compound that Meguiar's has. Uh, I chose to go with this because of it being the single stage and being 26 years old. I have no idea how much paint is left. I probably could have gone with a more aggressive and. Um, but uh, it's best to go safe first. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how much paint is actually being taken off when you see these pads. So next step is uh, we get our ran random orbital sand, uh, not sander, random orbital polisher. And then uh, we're gonna put some of this on there and see if we can't shine that up. So last night when I was doing this, I was using two different pads. I was using a uh, Terry, Terry pad to put on the polishing um, with the rubbing compound being on this uh, flat padded um, pad, so let's put that on there. I, it makes sense to do it the other way around, however, I had really good results last night uh, using it this way, and whether I messed it up or not, it worked. So, you know, basically when you're doing stuff like this, you want to start using like a test area and then um, go from there. Now I washed these pads from last night because they were completely saturated with red paint and um, yeah so let's get started 
Uh, here we go. So you always want to shake this up really good. This uh, tends to get separated. I was pretty liberal with this stuff last night, so I put a big X on it. Now, from other from other YouTube videos that I saw, they said to use very little rubbing compound when you're doing this stuff, but this is in such a ex, uh, uh, advanced state of, I'm gonna call it paint decon decomposition. Sure, I mean, I don't know if that's a word. Um, that I'm gonna use a lot just to keep everything wet. And you don't just turn it on it, no, you kinda put it along the door panel. Make sure, making sure that when you do finally hit it, it's not gonna fly all over the place. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, work this in and you'll see the results here in a minute. The mirror cap is something that's going to take a little bit of special attention, so I'm going to use a little dab there. I'm using a lot on this mirror cap, and it's basically not so much to, more, more, in my experience, more material doesn't mean more cutting, it just means that this is going to stay moist enough so that it's going to do less damage so that the compound doesn't dry out and become like sandpaper. That was annoying. All right, let's try and get all parts. All right, so now we can take a towel using microfiber towels and uh, I'm using the same ones that I used last night after after washing them um, only because they're already ruined and I'm just gonna put more red paint I guess into these so let's sort of wipe it off and I'm gonna show you kind of up close what it looks like when you wipe this off So immediately, absolutely immediately, you can see this paint responded so well to the cutting compound. Now I'm going to have to do a little more work with it because, first of all, it dried, which I'm not really a fan of when it dries because it doesn't want to come back off. So I'm going to use a little bit more just to make everything wet again. In fact, let me, I'm going to try to do something. I'm just going to try to use a little spritz of water to see if getting that stuff off might be helpful. And you can see all this redness on the, uh, on the towel. So. I'm going to flip this over, give it one little spray of water, and then see if that's better or worse. Not sure, hard to say. Although it does look like it's coming off of the uh, surface a lot better, which I guess makes sense. All right, I'm going to shine this up a little bit. I'm going to give you a good look down the side, and I apologize for the bumpiness here. But let's take a look down the side here, and you can kind of see there's a huge difference how dull that is, and then how this shine just came right back. There's the dull, ugly, gross. And it even feels kind of gross. I mean, not so good. 
and this is already feeling real smooth, almost almost silky. All right, so I'm also going to do the uh, this bottom strip too. Now the bottom strip is a little more difficult because it's not the same um, smoothness. It has that we talked about this before, the little dimply um, uh, pattern to it. And uh, that's by design to make sure that dings don't show up and stuff like that and dirt doesn't stick. But uh, it does make polishing kind of a pain in the ass. All right, so you'll notice that I went uh, by this section again. And the reason why is because I saw a pretty good line left over from um, from that stripe, that terrible, terrible stripe that we took off a couple of weeks ago. And it's still kind of there. And we'll see if the polishing compound, the thing that we do next, takes care of that or not. Really what the polishing compound is, is just a, a slightly less abrasive version of the cutting compound. I'm just going to go over it one more time uh, with a kind of a half stripe. Not so much material. Uh oh, did I make? No, we're good. Okay. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is create a burr on your uh, polishing pad. That's probably about it. Yeah. And really, what I'm doing is I'm just going over the middle part just to sort of see if I can't blend that together. Um, Still seeing I'm getting a lot of a lot of paint coming off. But not to worry, because that's kind of the point. It's almost like a derm abrasion for a car. It's you're, you're peeling just the top layer of damaged paint off. And hopefully it hasn't been done so many times that you don't have any layers left. And it does appear that this car has never been detailed, never been polished. Uh, which is good because that just means there's lots of paint underneath to get to. So I'm starting to believe that as, as long as nothing mechanically is bad about this car, I made a pretty good purchase after all is said and after all is said and done. Old tape doesn't work very well. So this is kind of the boring part of the job, but it's important because uh, all of this all of this rubber will leach blackness onto your paint, and that's uh, not what you want. Never a bad idea to keep turning your uh, white cloth or your your microfiber towel once it becomes saturated. You're just pushing around the same stuff. It'll also be better once I use the polishing compound and then the waxing compound. That's done. So there's that line I want to get rid of. It's pretty gross. And there's even some some dirt that looks like it's gotten road grime up underneath that. So I'm gonna see what I can do. Maybe not, but I'm not gonna make it much worse, I don't think. I also don't want to overheat my or orbital uh, polisher. I did that the other day when I was doing the trunk lid. It started smoking. Not good for people or for orbital polishers.
flight. All right, so let's do that. I'm gonna pop the hood for that because I don't really want to do the hood. This hood uh, is gonna be replaced one day. Look at that. I, I literally cannot believe that that looks so bad. And just after the cutting compound, it looks so much better. All right, so here we are. We've done the cutting compound, and now we're gonna move to, this is a polished compound. It is, uh, a lot of times, at least McGuire's does this, and, and it's weird that they didn't do it with the, with the cutting compound. Maybe this is a different, um, it's, it's very likely a different level, anyway. <clears throat> Get on my level. Anyway, they have numbers on them, and the other cutting compound I could have got was a 107 or something like that, and that seemed a little aggressive for single stage paint. So I just decided to go with this next level down consumer product. This is more of a pro product. And um, also, <laughs> also, I've had this for a very long time, and this is kind of a liquid where everything else is kind of a paste. So I don't know if this is still good. I've had this forever and ever and ever, but I never popped that little seal thing off of it. I just make sure that it's shook up really good before I start. Yeah, we'll just start. See how much of a liquid it is. That concerns me in certain ways, but, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, so I'm just going to dab this around. Give it a go. All right, so I sort of work, worked that in until it became kind of filmy. Um, and I'm gonna let that dry for just a, a minute or two and then I'm gonna wipe that off and see what I can see when I show you the microfiber. It's still pulling off some color, so that's good. I have any more? There we go. Always a good idea to keep, keep turning your Keep turning your cloths to get clean areas. Now, there is one drawback to polishing up your car, and that is you will now see every every tiny little ding, every tiny little scrape and scratch. Um, it will show you exactly uh, how bad the condition of your car is, and I'm I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. There's very few dings and dents and paint chips that uh, that this 26 year old car has so again not bad so at this point I think we're going to just cut it to the end so you can see kind of the finished finished product because this is all the same stuff over and over again <clears throat> you just basically want to go section by section uh, do it in the right order and uh, you're gonna be able to bring back a ton of color and and just pretty back to your to your paint so <clears throat> uh, single stage paint is actually easier to do because you don't have to, to deal with your clear coat a lot of time clear coats bake in the sun too much and they sort of uh, become all bubbly and 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 uh, actually peel up and once you have some of your uh, some of your clear coat peeling off and some of it not there's not a whole lot you can do to fix that that I know of uh, unless you use a very strong cutting compound maybe the Meguiar's 107 to just completely strip the clear coat off and uh, get to your paint but then again then you have to worry about how far do you go and um, so that's why Miata's these NA's are cool single stage paint you don't have to worry about clear coat Unless somebody put some on, which I can see they did poorly. Anyway, <clears throat> I finished with all the polishing compound, the rubbing compound, all that good stuff. So now <clears throat> I'm just going to really quickly go over the whole, this whole side of the car in the back with uh, the Meguiar, oh, excuse me, I've got Mother's Cleaner Wax. And um, <clears throat> this isn't just wax, it's, it also, it's also a little bit, it's got a little bit of uh, 
cut to it. Anyway, you're going to see how little I put on. It's just a very thin coat, and then I'm going to wipe that off, and then i got to go have lunch because I'm starving. Anyway, so watch this. There we go. I'm just going to put this all over. Well, so there you have it. I have brought this paint back from the dead. And I wish I could show you how pretty it is. It's very difficult to kind of see what's going on here, but um, you know, I've got I've got mirror mirror finishes going on now. I mean, this is this is not even close to <laughs> it's <laughs> it's actually quite remarkable what I've been able to do. And uh, again, it's really really difficult for, to tell. <laughs> I mean, I'm speechless because this this is better than I thought it was going to be. Now, <clears throat> the uh, a good indication of the difference is this trunk lid because this trunk lid is a different paint. It's something I did myself, and it's clearly clearly not as good. You can see right here. You can see definition in the leaves on the tree on the original paint and then my shitty paint job but I mean how amazing how absolutely gorgeous did this come out I'm, I'm absolutely happy so anyway even the bumper even the bumper came out really nice the bumper looked like it was dead like I was never gonna get any oh well I should probably take the wax off of that corner. Anyway, uh, I didn't think the bumper was going to return to anything close to original, but uh, as it turns out, it's gorgeous. The only piece that didn't uh, come out well is this, is this back piece, which a lot of times I see cracked and broken on old Miatas, but uh, I did okay. So I just got to finish taking this tape off. And then I'm going to go for a ride up to my favorite Chipotle and have a burrito. So seriously, uh, next time we're going to do, obviously we'll have to do something mechanical because that's pretty much all that's left to do. Um, I'm going to get a new antenna and uh, yeah, so probably coming up soon, coming up soon is going to be the uh, coilovers because I really do need to drop this just a little bit. That's that's sitting up there pretty high. Yep. Anyway. Okay. Until next time. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. <laughs>